Okay, I'm going to try a very spontaneous watercolor like I did in the past digitally. This one will be traditional though. Uh, this one will be just real loose colors. I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, no reference. Uh, we're just going to let the paint and water do its thing. And then we're going to try and pull out some shapes and objects within those patterns. Now what I'm going to do first is we're going to go with... Let's go with uh, quinacridone gold. A little bit of raw umber too. And then uh, some burnt siennas. And this will be uh, brown matter and maybe alizarin crimson. We'll stay with the reds, real light reds. But what I'm going to do is spray it down first. We're going to try and let this blend and bleed any way it wants to. Okay, there's a nice mist. Start with the lighter colors. I'm going to turn this upside down because I'm going to let it bleed. Downwards. We're going to pull some out too. And then now, burnt siennas. I'm going to leave it run down because it will actually be making the tops of the trees soft. And I have my drawing board at a pretty steep angle, about a 45. Okay, now here comes a little bit more intense burnt sienna, and then we're going to try some crimson. And if I have straight edges up on top here, they'll actually be the top of an object once I turn it around. Okay, now here comes the crimson. This is going to be strong. I'll let that bleed out. We're going to disguise that. There we go. And we're going to take some intense crimson. Now I'm going to pull out some white areas in that crimson just to make us some shapes. If I turn it upside down now, Now if I put some colors down in here, they're going to stop at those dry spots. But we'll leave this up in here just like it is. Let's go with a little bit of Elizarin Crimson, French Ultramarine. That's almost a dioxazine purple there. I'm going to let it stop at those dry spots. Now I'm working in reverse because now it's running down. I want some hard shapes in there. I'll give a little bit more water, but then if I whoop, if I get a little bit more water, make a real light edge. Just going off into paper. We're going to put some burnt sienna down in here. It's already starting to dry. OK, 
Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of burnt umber and French ultramarine to make up a silvery gray. We're going to start a little bit lighter though. Maybe just a little bit of foreground rocks and vegetation. And before that dries too much, I'll take a little bit more intense color and leave a bleed in towards the bottom of the dry areas. make a more of a shadowed area around some objects can have some softer shapes too Okay, let's let that dry. Okay, we got some shapes to work with here. These could be rocks and foreground, pebbles, stones, gravel, you name it. Put a little bit of tuft of grass here and there in the lighter areas. But then up, up in here, I could start making some trees, a bigger tree, dead snag, maybe one. But then we have to stagger the size of the trees, the rocks, the grass. We don't want anything the same size. And then we could also vary the values. Objects closer are going to be darker. Objects in the background will be lighter and more faint. And that will kind of have a directional flow, but then it will also create depth in our painting. Let's see how we can plan this out. Okay, to see what we're going to do here. In a case like this, 100% spontaneous painting. We're just letting the paint and the water do its thing again, but what we're going to also do is pull out what objects we have to work with. In other words, this object right here is one. This object right here is another one. This object right here is one. This one is another one. These right here, this kind of looks like a trough to me. So if I want to continue with the lay of the land, so to speak, then I would draw some lines down and through here and then maybe make this darker up through here as if it's just a runoff or drain off. Usually then I could also for color unity sake and painting sake, I could take some of my reds and put them down in here a little bit, maybe over here a little bit of a splash of red or down in here and that'll take my colors and spot them around through my painting. Number one, I'll have color unity and number two, that's usually the way the plants grow. If plants grow by seeds or by roots, they usually start off in a center area and then slowly grow out in all directions, whether it be by roots or by seeds falling to the ground. So that only makes sense in every way you look at it. Now some of these objects down here I could define even further smaller rocks and pebbles and stones half under grass. What I would have to do then is, is draw in my negative areas again and leave the lighter areas like this. This could be a rock right in here and then rocks down in here. I could have it two different ways. I could have a darker rock on top of a light background or a lighter rock on top of a dark background. Again, I'll have different objects that without light you can't have dark and vice versa. Meaning that if this, say for example, let's find a spot right here. If this is the edge of a tree and is dark, then I could create a darker edge over here anywhere 
to create another edge of another object. So then I'll have dark against light, light against dark. Same thing down in here or uh, even right here. If this is a start of a shape right here that could come up into here and go down into here, then what I could do is paint a little bit of yellows and golds out in here to make this look like a shape coming through here since I already have it started right here. Now that's all well and good, but it's just an idea of how you could see different objects within this mess, so to speak, and start defining them more and more as far as what you want to do. Now that your colors are still fairly light, then what I could do is start drawing in some heavy trees. I want to stagger their size, shape, and values, darker ones up front, lighter ones out back. This way I could start blocking in some of my next smaller shapes, but it is still light enough that I could start going over some of these colors that then I can make distant trees, close up trees, start to lay in some that if, if a tree is gonna come down in here, but then stop at this squiggly line, then I could start making it dark all around here and come up and then it'll look like this bush right in here is in front of the tree. Again, I'm painting only the negative spaces. It's very different than all of our lighter values. They're already done. We're not gonna do anything else with them. Maybe splotch them, splat them with a little bit of color, mist some water back over them if we need more texture. But what we have to do is create focal points that if it's gonna be a big dead tree here, then we'll, we'll emphasize that and then go off into lighter trees out this way, make a little bit of grass and rocks down here, and then that's it. We still have to plan typical composition in a mess such as this. So it's just not stagnant to straight cross. It'll be nice that if it had some kind of depth, some kind of focal point, and create shapes of what we have to work with so far. Let's see if we can block in some trees and I'll just go ahead and do that speed painting. Okay, let's see what we have. Now this tree first, I'm gonna make some of the branches much darker, but then what I would also do, this may be one of the few times I would use a highlight back over these darker areas, because what I would do is take highlights maybe down along here, overlapping this branch here. And the reason why is then that will show that this branch is going away from you and the trunk is in front of that branch. Same thing with this one. If I want to make this one look like it's going away from me, then I could take a highlight down and stop it at the trunk and let the shadowed side of the trunk be in front of that branch. This way, I want to avoid just branches coming straight off to the right, straight off to the left. And for that reason, since this bush area right in here is in front of the tree, I can even have a branch possibly coming out over and down and then have these little branches in front of this group of brush here to make it look like a, a branch is coming out at you and it's in front of what's in front of the tree, if that makes sense. So all, all I'm trying to do is create an illusion of depth. These pines here, they're a little bit too much of an inline. So what I think I might do is make one darker one like right in here just to break up this line. And then maybe one small one out in here just uh, as if they were just starting to grow the further away they get from the group of pines. And then some of the rocks I'll define a little bit more, make them a little bit more squiggles maybe here and there. 
and uh, define some of these darker areas back in here. Like right in here, I can make this darker right in here just to make it look like a deeper woods effect where there's very little shapes, you can barely make them out. And then the darker areas, what I can actually do is even invert this and make this real dark and what you see dark now becomes light and then that would be a lighter tree up against a real dark background. That would just be painting the negative spaces again, which is completely different than what I've been doing. Some of these are just positive, whereas uh, some I could also paint negative too. Let's go ahead and finish this one up. And that's it. Very quick, very basic. Okay, we'll add some finishing touches up on this one, and that will be it. What I can do is just to show you how the gesso works. I'll go back over the gesso. Let's say, for example, right in here. And it will allow me to put down one more coat. I want to make my highlights a little wee bit darker. And I won't make a mess because the gesso will seal the paper. And this will give me a chance to just go back over the highlights if they're too loud. There we go. And then I could put maybe a little bit of something in there. Okay. Now if I think this pine tree right here is too bright. I could go back in with the gesso again, do the same thing, maybe make some foreground branches, you know, optically lighten it up, but gesso will darken a little bit as it starts to dry. So it might be best to wait till it completely dries if you decide to use it, depending on how much water it has. Acrylics are the ex exact opposite of watercolors. They will dry a little bit darker when an acrylic dries, where watercolors dry quite a bit lighter when they dry. That should be dry already. And I'll just take a little bit of blues. That's kind of a muted green. This is just kind of like spot retouching. Here we go. Just to show you how I can lighten it back up. But then have a second chance at it if I make it too light. That's it. Now if I want to just add a little bit more darker values here and there. Water it out and put a little bit in the distance. Now 
There's the negative space right there. Streaking down into the purpley grass just to make my shadow of the rock when I'll have to paint around the grass. Breaking up some of these edges already will instantly create some of my mid-tones also. But you can have a streaky, sketchy look if you want. Because that's what kind of look you might end up getting. Which looks really nice in some situations too. Kind of like drawing with color. Just some distant shapes back in the woods. They may be lighter. Than the darkest colors in the background. Lighten those up just a little bit. Okay. I think that's about it. Let me see if I can pull out a little wee bit of light shapes in this paint I put down. It'll Lighten up as it dries. Okay, I think we call this little painting done. Just a basic study of colors and how to plant something out of nothing. Hope you got something out of this. I'll be putting out quite a bit of these types uh, just because I only have a little over an hour in something such as this. The other one I'll finish up that it is a bulldozer that I'm halfway through it. I brought it up in the last demo. Uh, those take anywhere from 20 to 30 hours to finish. And the other ones I have planned, they will also be along the lines of a 20 to literally 40 hour painting uh, just to finish it up. But these I'll have in between uh, just to change the pace. Hope you got something out of this one and like I always say please like, subscribe and until I see you out in the field or back at the studio thanks for watching.